Hi, I'm Janie. Welcome to the Lee Kempner House here in Galveston, Texas. I'm the president of the nonprofit set up to restore and preserve this amazing house. If you've been watching these videos, you know what we're all about. But if you're new here, go in the description. You can check out the links to our website and other social media and get caught up on all the work that's been going on here. If you've been here a while, you know that we occasionally do a walkabout. And that's where I take you to another fabulous house here on Galveston Island to give you a little glimpse of the history and some of the other beautiful houses here on the island. Today, we're having a little departure from that. Instead of showing you footage of the work being done here at the League Kittner House, we're having a full length walkabout. I had a unique opportunity because of Heather, one of our volunteers here, to go inside just the most amazing house. Let me tell you a little bit about its history and then let's get over there and check it out. First, let me back up and say the reason I even had this opportunity is this house is about to be on the Galveston home tour. That home tour is put on the first two weekends in May every year by the Galveston Historic Foundation. They put several homes on tour. Some are work in progress. I've done the tour three times myself as a work in progress at the Lucas Apartments at the Lucas Apartments as a finished project, and then here at the Lee Kempner House as a work in progress. So I know what it takes to be on the home tour. It's a lot of work getting prepped, and Angela, the owner of this amazing house, is doing the last minute detailing of her house to get it ready to be on the tour this year. And she's asked Heather to etch the glass on her front doors and the big uh, light above that with a design to kind of add some finishing touches to the door itself. Heather's doing that work over the next few days and she's invited me to come along and check out the house and see how she does that process. Now, the thing that's interesting about this house is it was burned completely on the inside. When Angela bought this house, the only thing left of the house was a part of the stairwell and the exterior walls. In fact, I talked to the contractor who did the work for her and he was surprised that the house just didn't blow over because there were no supports inside. There were a couple of little posts that had been set up to lend some support, but he thinks what saved it is that the windows were gone so the wind was able to blow through the house and not push those walls over. So everything that you're going to see with the exception of part of the stairwell is a complete new build from the inside out to those exterior walls. And they took great care to look at the handful of old photographs they had to see what it originally looked like, to studying the floor joists underneath, which were still intact, and some of the first floor floors so they could see where walls were meant to be based on the supports under the house. So it's a complete recreation inside with just a minor tweak to add an elevator and to make room for the ducting for the AC and heating equipment. So let's get over there and check it out. Okay, Heather is getting started with the cleaning. And right now, what are you using? I'm just using some True Grit glass cleaner and then I'm gonna go over this with some alcohol. I've gotta get the window completely clean so that the images will adhere, basically. So that's what's gonna happen here. I think I'm gonna go and clean the other side too, just because so you can see so i can see yeah it's, if it's dirty it's or not <laughs> pretty dirty from just you know the air from outside and of course the sea spray and stuff it always just keeps these outside doors so dirty and it's so windy breezy breezy i should say here on the island these are the stencils themselves i'm going to zoom in so you can see so there's a design for the window above and then one for the side windows on the door Heather's cleaning, I'm going to walk through and show you the house. And the first thing you see when you come in, which surprised me, is actually a very small staircase. And look at the handrail. It goes up almost vertical. It's this tight spiral staircase, which makes me wonder how they get furniture in. But we're going to go up there in a second. I want to back up and start by showing you the light fixtures are fabulous. Angela, the owner of the house loves light fixtures and she has really done a fabulous job. Look at this brass fixture. Everything is period. 
to the house. But look here in the dining room. It's this spectacular Baccarat crystal fixture. And you can see everything is a little disheveled because this was under renovation for almost nine years. And getting ready for the home tour, I can tell you, is a monumental effort trying to get all the pictures hung, the finishing touches. Everything is kind of down to the wire. But the dining room leads to a kitchen. Another fabulous fixture that's a little hard to get an angle on. But on the other side is the butler's pantry. And it's got a matching fixture to that one going into the kitchen. But one thing you'll notice about the butler's pantry is this is all new. And a lot of what you see in here is new construction because this house burned and was basically gutted out and had to be rebuilt. But great care has been given to keep all the original character to match all of the woodwork to the original. She's even got this incredible new gas stove that looks like an old gas stove that would have been period to the house. And look, I just can't get over the light fixtures. Every one of them is just unique and special. Let me take you to the living areas. Back in the entry, and I'm heading into kind of the two parlor areas. <laughs> look at this light fixture. Oh my gosh. So incredible. And again, nothing in here is original. The fireplace is an old fireplace. It's not the one that was in this house. But look at the incredible tile. And I love this, all the plants in the little alcove. The Victorians were very much into ferns and plants indoors, and a lot of them use those little alcoves for that purpose. And then another fabulous fixture, and the medallions are all incredible. I've got Angela Mike, so I'm going to talk loud so you can hear me. Um, she's got a quiet voice, too. But she doesn't want to be on camera, and we have to respect that, but she's agreed to answer some questions. So, Angela, are all these medallions new or yes. are they original? They're all reproductions. They're all new. reproductions, but of authentic there Victorian. There was nothing new left, uh, nothing left in this house. This house burned. Except some of the, uh, some of the floor mm -hmm. and most of the spiral staircase. But you sourced and purchased all these light fixtures yes. yourself. Yes. Incredible. Yes. And the medallions. Look at the faces in the And this has been a nine year process for you? Sure, ten. Almost ten. <laughs> ten since I bought it. I suppose we didn't start for the first few months. So let's take a close look at the staircase. Angela said a lot of this was salvaged, and you can see on this mule post the fire damage. So it's been cleaned and lightly sanded, but the effects of the fire are still here. And you can see why it didn't burn. It's huge. Some of these steps look original, but I don't even know if I can get this to do it justice it's just almost completely vertical this handrail but you can see the detail in it where it was burned but cleaned and salvaged and it's interesting as you look you can see what's original and what's not so here's some original wood and then the new wood so they did save oops, what they could It just gives character to the house. And look at this old bead trim. But again, you can see the effects of the fire.
But the craftsmanship in putting this together is amazing. Here's the old spindle with the fire damage and a new spindle next to it where they've recreated. As we go up, another fabulous light fixture, and it's a pair. And Angela said, this room is her second favorite fixture. These globes are actually original. And another fireplace. Still in process. And I love, this is a matching little alcove to the one below that had the ferns. And the detail and the trim, the little rosette. So here's one of the bathrooms. And it's done similar to a, an original Victorian bathroom. It's got the plain subway tile with just the cap, similar to what we have at the League House. But she's used an old buffet as the vanity. And this really incredible etched glass fixture. I don't know if you can see that shade. That shade is amazing. There you go. And that was originally a gas fixture that was converted. See the valve on the bottom for the gas and the uplight? This house is a little older than the leak house. It's 1890. The clawfoot tub. And all the doors have reproduction hardware, but they are reproductions of the type of hardware that would have been in this house. And the pretty decorative hinges. And then look here. I won't go in the other bedrooms, but let me show you. There's this other teeny tiny stair that goes up. And I've never seen a handrail like this. It's up and vertical. <laughs> and this takes you up to the third floor. What used to be probably attic or workspace for the servants, kind of like we had in the league house. It's got this incredibly sweet hand painted globe on the fixture. But this is one of those, wait, there's more. You come in here, there's another staircase. This is a great entertainment space. I love the printed carpet or the pattern carpet. Let's go explore and see what's up there. Looks like they've added a full bath here. Oh, I know what this is. Okay, this goes to the cupola on top. Or not the cupola, this would be a widow's walk. I've got to go back outside and look. But look. got a hatch so you can actually open it and go outside and stand in that widow's walk. Heather showed me this secret little space. This is the attic where all the mechanical is. The air handling equipment for the AC. But There's a cockroach. Welcome to Texas. I'll be killing that. Oh, come here. Oh, got him. Okay. Here's another little door. And we're outside on the front. So I don't know who would have come up here, but my guess is originally this was for ventilation. So just like we have a cupola on top. They had this little area to open up and have airflow through the house. I'm back on the little stair going down, but I just wanted to show you these giant posts. These have been reproduced to match 
the one that was remaining downstairs that I showed you the fire damage on. So a lot of care has gone in to recreating this house. All right, here we are on the outside. And look at that trim on the house. Oh my gosh. Let me get a little closer and then get steady and zoom in for you guys. Look how they've done the cute herringbone walk around the outside. Got new trees planted, but look at the house. And there's so much to look at and see. I just, it's mind blowing. Look at the widow's walk up there. I don't know what that's made of, but that's incredible. Here's that little space I took you to. Where I opened the door and you could see outside. And look at the pattern of the roof. I mean, the detail is incredible. This house also has a carriage house. I'm going to go around the back and show you that. So here's the little carriage house. It's got a garage underneath. And that, I'm guessing, is the base where a wooden cistern would have sat on top when the house was originally built to catch water. And look at the detail on the back of the fireplace. Let me get closer. Look at that. How cute is that? Let's go look inside that cistern. So we've seen this before where there's a brick or concrete structure underneath. And a wooden cistern would have sat on top. That's strange. It's got barnacles. I don't know if that wood was recovered from somewhere, but that's interesting. Even the screen door is cute. It's got a copper screen. And this cute little knob. Okay, Heather is still cleaning. She warned me that cleaning was about 70% of this whole process. It's got to be perfect before the stencil goes on. Yes, it does. And as we all know, prep is the key to a good job. And this is, this is going to require a lot of prep to make sure that this is ready to go and that everything adheres proper. Um, and I might add that this process I'm about to do is not, was not my first choice. My first choice would have been to use an etching cream, but because the glass is already installed and it's, I, we don't want to mess anything up removing it, I'm going to go to plan B, which is a spray. And that's what we're doing. Okay. So when we do the ones at the Lee Kempner house, we'll be able to do it flat on the ground and you can yes, use the cream because when you use the etching cream you need like a water hose I mean you have to so really we'll do it before the glass is installed in the yes, window and that way it's more exactly that's okay. it's the better process yeah this is fun I've never done this before I've watched people do it online and thought about it but just never had an opportunity so it's great to have an expert uh, yes I've done this many times but mostly with the cream versus this so this is this is a way to do it, and so we're going to do it this way. So you'll have to tape all the wood off yes, and cover it up. Yes, to protect everything. Yeah, so that'll be more prep that I have to do that. More so prep. More, more prep. prep. Yay! More prep. More prep. More prep. <laughs> but that'll go fast. Okay, so Angela just told me some interesting facts about the house. It's called the McKinney McDonald House. It was built by the McKinneys and sold after the great 1900 storm to someone who held it maybe a year and then it was sold to the McDonald's. McDonald's or McDonough? McDonald's. 
and their descendants are still here. The granddaughter had this mirror and has given it back to Angela so that it can return to the house where it came from. So that's really neat to have something of the original family here. Okay, so what are you doing here? I am burnishing the design. This is the double M for monogram to go up in the transom for McKinney McDonald. And this is the, the, this is the upper design. And then these are the two that go in the lower windows. I don't know if you can see that. So what does the burnishing do? So the, what the burnishing does is it keeps, so there's a backer paper and there's this front paper. And it, what it does is because this is not a, a, an actual stencil itself has to have little connector joints, but because this is like a one-time use, there's no connector joints. So these are free floating pieces. So in order to keep it stuck and in place, I need to burnish it down so that it stays put for me. And I may have to kind of do it as I roll it out and lay the image on. So this is the side that will stick to the glass. And then once it's stuck and in place, then I peel this top layer off. So you're going to off. peel this off. Slowly. So you're making sure that these little pieces are stuck on this top layer right now so they won't so off. they won't come off that's correct yeah because if they move then you know i have to either try to re you know put it back down and re replace them um, but i need to make sure that it all you know stays in place and this is for glass wall ceilings whatever you put these designs on and these were done custom to fit these windows um, from a, a company I order from is Wall Mask, and his name is Josh Strecker, and he does all this custom, and this is all artwork, and he does stencils and everything, and, and I buy from him, and then there's another company online called Manella Designs that also makes these, and these are really cool. They're all, you know, order to size, custom things. So that's it. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so Heather's up there fitting. So he's got them cut. They're not as tall, so I'll have to measure get everything in the exact right place. This. Make sure everything's fine. Do you need a hand? Do you want me to get on the other side and hold no, that? I'm just trying to see it loosely. If I put these, you know, like this, like what I'm looking at as far as how far I'm going to go. So you got to lay a line in the center and start from the center and go out. So I'm going to have to mark where is the center. Yeah. So I'll mark where is the center and then I'll put this one, I'll put one side on and then I'll put the other side on. I wish it were all one piece, but this one's too big to do in one piece. These, thankfully, these are all, you know, one piece. One piece. And I can just, you know, place them in. Out. Okay, I have to record this. Angela just told me that this house was empty for 20 years before she bought it. Angela just said it burned in 1994 and she bought it May 1st of 2013. So she bought it just two months before I bought the Lucas apartment. You're perplexed why you're an inch down. So this isn't exactly an inch, like I had said. This is an inch. This is an inch. This is an inch and a half. So you're the, <laughs> and I'm level. The so. glass isn't square. So it measure has to be. measure the center and the edge, top to bottom, and see. So the center is and this is the center. The center is twenty five and the quarter, and here it is twenty five. Yeah, so. there's the difference. So fortunately, your pattern is scrolly and up, so you don't yes. have a definitive straight line. We're not going to see, gonna see so that. visually. I think I'd rather because you're going to see the bottom less. I'd rather have the top be level, level. than the bottom. When if you're I have coming to pick. up, that's what people will uh -huh. look up and see. Their line of sight will be the top. They won't see this. So okay, and there's not much pattern at the top. So mm -mm. And he, and look, he forgot to weed these, so I'll have to weed those out. Oh, and so there's more pattern in there. Yeah, you just can't, you just see, can't it. see it because <laughs> when he did it, see all this scrolly here. And then here at the top of the M, he didn't weed that out either. So once I get it laid, 
I'll pull that Check out that of there. Out. Yeah. All right. So here's how it works. So I'm going to very what's the what's the weight capacity of this ladder? Oh, I think it's like three or four hundred pounds. Oh, we're good. Probably. Hopefully we're good. Yeah. Well, hopefully we're good. Golly, we that'd won't be terrible. Say our weight on that'd be terrible. We if won't we're say not. our weight on national TV. Yeah, we won't, will we? This is the real trick. So I'm trying not to really touch the glass since I have it all clean as well. Here we go. I'm going to use my head as a rest. I'm going to go up one more step. So this this edge. This is not a very glamorous job. <sighs> Resting things on your head and cleaning and peeling and everything else. Okay. So hopefully everything is on there very tight. And my burnishing. And now I'm going to very carefully lay this down. That it sticks exactly where I want it. Now I can see like the M. Uh -huh. See, I'll have right to pull there. that out. Pull that I'll out. have to weed that out. He can, he can miss that in his weeding. You want me to pull on this edge straight? Yeah, I'm just, just kind of slowly releasing the backer paper. Okay, good. I got him back. Oh, something didn't stay on here, too. Where? Right here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, I, you know what? I'll put that back on. So I'll I get have to done. go back. Okay. I'll get. I'll put him back when I get done. That one's an easy one. The one here in the middle. These are the. These are the harder ones. So I'll have to do some little fixing, but I'm just kind of watching it as I, as I pull it. Okay. So see this whole thing here where he didn't weed it is trying to come undone. I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to try it. So you can see why burnishing is really, really important because when I see it wanting to release, I have to just try to make sure it sticks back down. I don't want it to, I don't want it to do that on me. I've never <laughs> seen that. It's like a surgeon's kit. Uh-huh. My little surgeon's kit for exacto blades. Yeah, I think what I'll do is it's not so necessary up here, but I'm going to slice this off so that it bites me less. Because we don't need this part anyway. Let's see that. Uh, oh, yeah, see that one's coming See the off. little shadow I can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Just make it stick to the top again. Yeah. And there's another one to the left right there, right there. They stuck little dudes. They don't like coming off at this. Some of them don't like coming off at this horizontal angle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they want to pull away. All right, we're almost there. Come on, just a little bit more. A little bit more cooperation from you. And we'll have one down. So now I'm burnishing it down again because I want to make sure yeah, that it's stuck to the out. window. Like bubbles, uh, like wallpaper? Or does that no, mean? Mm -mm, no, because I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull this top piece off, and then that's when I'll weed out these other pieces. No, they may just come out with it. I don't know. But so, so here we go. So see, you always pull it at like this really, really tight. Right you know, angle angle so that everything sticks. Oh, I have that one piece that I have piece to put there. back too. Yeah. I'll go down and get that off of that sheet in a minute. We'll put it back. I might put it back after I do the other piece because I'm not really sure. To center it, make uh -huh. sure it matches Exactly up. where it goes. So, yeah, so you can see what's happening here. This is, this is just kind of tearing as it will, but at least, you know, I'm just revealing this. That's almost... Mm -hmm. Sticky it's, wax paper feel. Yeah, I don't know what kind of paper it is, but it's pretty. I don't know if it's making me nervous, but <laughs> it's pretty magical how it just, you know, it releases like this. But, you know, here's now the, you know, here's the image that we're going to do, which is a beautiful, beautiful image. There's one. I'm going to 
toss my stuff down to the ground and I make a big mess. And then I clean it up later. So I have a lot of times just tear it so I have, a, you know, a more manageable piece to come off. I will have to get my little thingy and so see this piece, see these mm -hmm. here? So tiny. Uh-huh. So see how that has to come out? So he didn't weed those whenever he, he missed. He either missed it or they were too little and he goes, he was like, Heather, you can do it <laughs> later. So that has to be been. done before he puts the backing on it. Yes. So he cuts he this image side. and he weeds it and then he puts this. Puts the backing after he, he's finished he puts pulling all that out. This paper, he puts this top paper on after. Yeah, this paper that I'm peeling off now, mm -hmm. that is the last thing that he puts over the top of it. I've done full on ceilings with these things. So I, you know, I've applied on, you know, big ceiling insets, these entire images and oh, then wow. done, you know, the artwork in them. Okay. So uh, those are, those are crazy big. I think I have one on my Instagram page where I'm up doing a ceiling and then I show like some before and afters of it. And then I show me peeling um, you know, this off and revealing the, the image when I'm done because it got all plastered over the top. This whole image got plastered over the whole top of it. And then when you pull it off, you get to see the whole thing. So here, you know, is weeding out the rest of this very fine little delicate sort of Victorian looking uh, design. So there's definitely more to it. And then here's the rest of the M monogram up here. That I'll get out. I think he, when he pulled it out, he pulled this design out wrong right here. It doesn't follow. And I looked on the piece that you took off, and it's not there. So when I just, can you like cut something out down here? Mm -hmm. Over it and use your tractor. Yep, I certainly can. And that's exactly what I'll do. I'm gonna have to make some judgment calls here on how I do this. Yes, right, Janie so is helping. Right, so there's a big one here. Yep. And then we need like another one. I see two. what you're uh -huh. you want two over here. Or one? I don't know. I think one. I mean, I don't want to get. One kind of bigger one. Yeah, I just we just need something to fill that space in since it got got blanked out. But yeah, so Janie Janie is going to be the artiste on this. Floral, yeah, she's serious. She's got her glasses on. <laughs> Look how okay, perfect that is. Bit, yeah, it needs a little actually. swoop, doesn't it? Yeah, it needs like a little. There you go. We'll just cut. There you go. Perfect. Needs, I think a bigger swoop. There you go. Bigger swoop. Perfect. And take it out of there. I know this stuff's really cool. I'm glad I painted my fingernails for actually, I'm glad you did, did too. <laughs> so you're gonna put that little arch on there i love it i love it it's perfect you've done a great job right there that totally fixes that i had told angela to do the double m for the mckinney mcdonald on here and it just so happens that her last name starts with an m too so that works out really well okay, okay. i think so that we think? solved problem solved Okay, so we're back from lunch, and we're going to do the lower windows, which should be easier because it's in one piece. It's got the birds. Oh. Can you see the pattern? Yeah, that's gorgeous. But they are cut too wide <gasps> for some oh, reason. No. Look at that. That's not going to work. So, oh, I mean, it's just the tails of them. It got too big. Got mismeasured or something. Uh -huh. Somehow it got mismeasured. So it's right. see it's, it's too right wide height. here. It's perfect height. I mean, they're perfect as far as that goes, but they're, they're too wide. Mm. Uh, shoot. Well, we'll just have to get these recut and come back to these windows now that I already so have them all. we won't be doing that today. We won't so be we'll doing that today. It is always something. Everybody, you're handy paper taping thing oh my gosh i couldn't live without this thing it's the best it's this is like the best thing ever do you ever, do you ever use one of these no oh I've my god it, but i don't have one uh, a tool i don't have how do you not have this tool this is the best tool ever 
I mean, my job, I do a lot of really messy things. So <laughs> to protect lots of areas with, and this is just one really good way to protect, you know, a good area easily and quickly. Here we go. Uh -oh. Here we go. Yeah, I've got my respirator on. I'm a safe painter. What's that? Ooh, one little thingy that needs to go. There we go. All right, off we go. That frosting spray paint is really stinky. So as soon as Heather finished spraying the door, we decided to go up and explore the widow's walk. It was really fun, and there's a short out there on YouTube. You can check it out. I'll stick it at the end of this video for those of you who haven't seen it. Once the frosting was dry, we went back down, and Heather masked off the monogram. Because it's a double M, she wanted it to really stand out. So the second M is done with a gold tone to it. So she masked everything that wasn't going to be gold, sprayed the gold, and finished up. Getting that sticky part of the design off the window was very tedious. The bigger parts were okay to pull off, but it left all those little tiny cutouts stuck on the window. And the only way to get it was to use the tip of the X-Acto blade and pick them off one at a time. So I'd been sitting watching Heather work almost all day. I had done very little to help, so it was something I could do we shared the ladder and i worked on one side and she worked on the other and we were able to get it done her pattern maker was able to expedite the correct size of the design and get it to her and heather came back on friday to finish up the lower part of the doors joe and i stopped by to say hi we were down doing some other work at the league house and we just wanted to check out and see how things worked out and it looked beautiful unfortunately it didn't photograph very well so you'll just have to trust me on that or come to the home tour a big thank you to angela for inviting us into her home and sharing some of this with you if you haven't come down to the historic home tour put on by the galveston historic foundation please consider coming and supporting a great cause all the proceeds from the ticket sales go into the ghf to support their work preserving even more of these historical structures on Galveston Island. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time back at the Lake Kempner House. All right, Heather and I are on the Widow's Walk. Say cheese. Cheese. Say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go downstairs and show you where we are. But look at this incredible view. Oh, and that sound. That's, That's parrots, the parrots of the water. <laughs> So much fun. There's the Bishop's Palace and the Galvez, the Pleasure Pier. You can see everything from up here. And there she is. Say hi, Heather. She's way up there.